Welcome back aboard Alameda the Star. Today's installment is entitled, What They Won't Tell You at the Boat Show. Uh, I've owned a lot of different types of boats, sailboats, uh, power boats, trawlers, etc. And after having a lot of boats, you realize that there's no such thing as a perfect boat, first of all. Uh, and secondly, uh, a boat is uh, the best compromise uh, that you can make. So, and each boat has a slightly different purpose although the categories have similar purposes. So what I'm going to do today is show you some things about Alameda Star Kashing uh, 40 Sun Deck Trawler uh, that I think are essential on any type of vessel that you get that sometimes people may not think about uh, when they're first uh, getting into boating. So we're going to talk about things like freeboard, uh, getting off and on easily. We're going to talk about side decks, width, and then other factors that can really make a difference in the enjoyment uh, of your vessel. Okay, here we are on the exterior of Alameda Star. Uh, there's several things that we will look at as we take our tour on the exterior here. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that Alameda Star is built of fiberglass. Uh, fiberglass is one of many materials that can be used, including wood, metal, ferro cement, etc. The great thing about fiberglass is it's easy to maintain, one, two, it probably has the highest resale value because it's the best known. The next point I'd share about Alameda Star are her decks. Her decks are made of a non-skid material, uh, which is generally very low maintenance uh, and is has great non-skid properties. Uh, I think that non-skid is actually more favorable than teak. Teak is a gr excellent non-skid properties. However, teak requires a great amount of maintenance. Uh, you have to maintain the teak. You also have to maintain the cork uh, between the teak. And that can be very expensive. If you get water between that teak deck and the, uh, the main fiberglass deck, it can seep down into the sandwich. The deck is made of a sandwich, and that can cause rotting problems, which is a huge headache. Many Asian tra trawlers suffered from this problem, so it's really something you want to look out for uh, if you are purchasing a vessel uh, with teak decks. All right, as we head to the aft of the vessel, uh, there's a couple other things that we can show you. We talked about this when we were doing the interior tour. This is a sun deck trawler. What a sun deck trawler does, it gives you that tremendous aft cabin and aft deck. However, compared to a vessel, a sedan type style, like the Grand Banks 32, it does break up the line. I think it makes it a little bit more ungainly. When we purchased the vessel, she had a, a canopy or enclosures all the way around that extended to the top of the hard deck. And frankly, uh, that made her look too unwieldy uh, in the stern. And so we removed those, and it did improve it somewhat, though it's not nearly as sleek as a Grand Banks 32. We're now moving forward uh, to the bow of the vessel. When you look at the bow, most people consider the flare of the bow. Uh, how much does it go outward? On this vessel, I would say they're pretty much taking it to the extreme for a 40 foot. This boat definitely has a lot of flare. The flare does two things. It adds buoyancy uh, in the bow. It brings the beam forward, which gives you more interior room, uh, which is nice. Uh, the disadvantages of the flared bow are that uh, it can be a rougher ride uh, because it's going to push out more water and it doesn't slice through the water so efficiently. Then on the plus side, uh, it will be a little, tend to be a little bit uh, drier than a narrow bar. As we move back down the vessel, uh, you'll notice running alongside is a strake, a fiberglass strake. This is really a protecting device uh, in case you run up against a hard object when you're docking. On new vessels now, they're putting in massive side windows. Look at this one in the following picture. It's a very sleek vessel. But those side windows are enormous. Now, I'm sure they have a lot of structural integrity. But go to a marina. Look at the pilings. Look at the docks. Look at the projectiles. They're going to get scratched. And then they're going to suffer from UV. The other thing, look at those side decks once again. Very small. How much fun is it going to be to maneuver around that? Okay, the next thing we want to do is consider the vessel's freeboard. What does freeboard mean? Freeboard is the height of the vessel uh, from the water. Uh, to the top of the vessel. The higher the freeboard, 
uh, the higher the center of gravity, which generally makes, makes it less stable. The other important component of freeboard is the ease it is to get on or off the vessel. Uh, you don't want to be having to do high jumping uh, to get on your vessel. Uh, I think the Kashin 40 has got a moderate freeboard. Uh, you can get on the vessel without having to go up too many steps. It takes two steps here to get on very easily. Okay, so let's take a look at this boat. Look how high those uh, decks are from the dock. It's got to be four to five feet. How do you think the Admiral's going to like it when she has to jump down because it's too difficult to come off the uh, stone ladder? Again, ankle alert. Now we're back aboard Alameda Star. What they'll never tell you at the boat show is that you really need to consider the outdoor spaces. They'll always focus on the cabin. But the reality is, is you're going to be using your boat most of the time in good weather. And so you need to make sure that the outdoor spaces are really livable. And this means that things are ergonomically correct. It's easy to move around. And most importantly, in my opinion, in that it's very easy to move fore and aft of the boat. And that requires wide side decks. One of the things that I really liked about the Grand Banks 32 and the Kashin is that you have wide side decks that make it very easy to move around. It's really a safety issue. The other point is you want to make sure there are handholds within reach at all times. Now let's consider the side decks on another vessel, a vessel that I actually like, a Bayliner 3880. But the side decks are very narrow, less than a foot wide. Can you imagine navigating that when the boat's rocking and rolling and you're carrying a fender? Uh, probably not that easy. Something to consider. So Alameda Star has what is known as a hard top over the sun deck. And this is a nice feature because it really saves the, uh, the boat from the uh, elements. Sometimes these are done uh, in sombrella too. Uh, some people will say that putting that much weight will change the center of gravity, and it probably does, but for our uses, uh, it's absolutely fine. It's just three steps up to the flybridge, which is nice. Another benefit of the sun deck, in that you don't have to climb up five, six, seven ladders to get to the, uh, the flybridge. And the flybridge here is large, has seating for many people, so they can see out uh, when they're going along, and it's just a very comfortable space to be. We also have it enclosed, with removable windows. So that brings us to the end of the tour of part one of what they don't tell you at a boat show.